Al in Poland wants to talk to us about how AXP is going to help transition people to becoming atheists. Hey, Al, how's it going? Um, I'm doing very well. Excellent. So you wanted to talk about how this show helps people transition to being atheists? Well, okay. So if I could give you some uh, short, brief background. Um, I uh, was raised in a Lutheran family in Sydney, Australia, uh, taken to church every Sunday. But I started having doubts when I was seven. And by the time I was 10 or 11, I was able to tell my parents, hey, I don't believe in this anymore. And and, I, 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 and I've, I've embraced uh, science and things like that since then. How did your parents easy. react? I know. I recognize it was so easy for me. But so how I, I, difficult must it be for some people who spend a large part of their life believing to change, to transition? Well, it depends on the person. Um I mean, for me, it was, you know, I can't actually point to the the day or even necessarily the year that I stopped believing. Um, I estimated 10 to 15 years ago, but, I, you know, I can't actually point to one thing. Um, we have other well, hosts on this you. show who, who uh, can point to a day um, and a moment even. So, and I know people who, you know, a lot of people in the ACA who, who are friends of mine who are in that same boat. Um, they can point to specific things or some of them are a little bit fuzzier, but um, and some came, you know, more roundabout ways. So uh, it can be very, very difficult depending on your background. I mean, one of the most difficult things you do because you know you're going to turn your back on family. And we have, I have friends who are atheists who have done, had to do exactly that. Um, who ha can have no more contact with their family because it's so so toxic, and they kind of knew that before before it happened. So it depends. I understand that, but um, how how old were you when you kind of uh, identified as atheist? Between my thirties and forties. Same here. Yeah. So that that that's actually interesting for me, as a, uh, because I was a child and I, I went, hey, this is all stupid. But yeah, if I would have been seven years old and told my parents it was all stupid, uh, not only would I have, I, I probably, I'm, I don't know how much I would have gotten like a spanking or what sort of punishment there would have been, but there would have been punishment. And my ass, would, well, you couldn't really have me in church any more than I was because I was there Sunday morning, Sunday night, Monday night, uh, Wednesday night, Thursday night, you know, and all kinds of stuff. So I was in church all the time. But if I had said that, there's no way my parents would take it well. And so you have to recognize that anyone who at seven years old can just tell their parents, oh, this religion stuff's nonsense. I don't want anything to do with it. Uh, and their parents are okay with that. Already probably weren't in a pretty religious environment to begin with. Oh, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I, I guess I, I seven was when I got my first doubts and I told my parents when I was 10 that I didn't want to go to church okay. anymore. Every, everything that I just said about doing it at seven Everything that I just said about doing it at seven would have been true at 10 as well. Yeah. Matter of fact, it would have been true at 17. However, however let, let's say someone, you know, so uh, the, I don't know how to actually put this, but someone who has, has based his existence or his or her existence on that something will live on after you die and things mm -hmm. like this to, him, to to be confronted by the nothingness, it, it has to be difficult. I, I count myself extremely lucky. And, it can, it and can be difficult. The call screener is, does this program help? Sometimes, if you don't mind me saying, Matt gets a bit aggressive. Really? We had and noticed. Is, is that, <laughs> someone who wants to transition? In, in 15 years, you're the first person to mention that. Thanks for letting me know. Yeah. <laughs> and you would be surprised, I think, um, if you go back and listen to this show's entire back history and listen to the number of people who say, hey, this show actually helped me um, over the last 20 some odd years, uh, you would be surprised. If you had access to our email, you'd be even more surprised. Um, if you were to show up at the library when we, you know, COVID goes away, you would be surprised at how many people show up there 
um, and are, are making, for lack of a better word, a pilgrimage to the show and to watch it live because that's what changed their lives for the better. So I think you'd be surprised at the number of people, but we don't hear from as much or if at all as the number of people we may completely turn off of atheism because of, of any one host's approach, whether it's Matt's or mine or Jenna's or uh, Jen Peoples or you know any former host or any current host. Uh, we're only gonna reach a certain number of people and we can do what we can do. Um, and if it's not AXP, maybe it's the line. Maybe it's watching a, a you know, a debate that, that uh, happened 10 years ago that happens to be on YouTube. Maybe it never happens. But we're only going to reach so many people, and we do reach people. So it the other happen. thing is that, that while I don't pretend that I get it right all the time, um, I think the overwhelming majority of the time when people want to claim that I'm aggressive, um, I think it's justified. I think that when you get people in here, but see, some of the confusion is that, like, let's say someone calls in and they're they're trying to defend a biblical notion of slavery, which happens all the time. And they are dishonestly representing what the book says, or they've called in to tell me I'm wrong. Like literally last week, somebody called in to tell me I was wrong. And if you tell me I'm wrong, you better fucking bring your A game. And in this case, yeah. what we find out, but what we've, what we've, what, hang on, hang on, hang on. What we, find, what we find out is that I wasn't wrong. And the, the times when people are like, oh, Matt's angry. Generally, nobody's ever seen me angry on the show. Uh, there are a few, only a handful of people who <laughs> have ever seen me truly angry in real life. I, I'm, I'm pretty laid back, but I, I value the truth and I value honesty and argument. And if you think that when I'm talking to, let's say, a Christian apologist on the phone, that I'm trying to change their mind and that when I get irritated, this is runs counter to them changing their mind, the mistake that someone has made is assuming that I'm trying to change that person's mind. I'm not. I'm trying to change the mind of the thousands of people sitting at home who agree with that person who don't want to be publicly embarrassed for believing ridiculous and immoral things. And so I'm not doing it for the caller's benefit. I'm happy if the caller changes their mind, but I'm doing it for the people watching at home. And while well, anybody can complain and say, oh, I, I have a better way. You should do your show this way because it's better. I ask them the same thing. What data do you have? Because I have 15 years worth of data of doing this show and showing what works and what doesn't work. And I've thousands upon thousands of minds changed to the point where there's not a, an event that I can go do where there aren't a dozen people walking up to thank me and the atheist community of Austin for putting forward the content that helped them change their lives. So I'm not all that interested in, okay. in like, in like the tone trolling or tone policing, uh, because at no point am I saying that my way is the only way or that my way is the right way, or that I should only do things a certain way. As a matter of fact, I think I've done things about every possible way someone could, and it's worked. Okay, I, I really enjoy, was there to ask a question, but um, I suspected that you were going to say it was for, it was for the listener's benefit rather than the caller's benefit that you argue with them. However, you know, just, just as a side issue, have you ever thought, because I have, what is the motivation of the people who call in to argue for a theistic point of view? It, they have different motivations. Not, they don't all call for the same reason. Some of them are calling in because they're convinced that I'm wrong and working for Satan and that I need to be exposed. Others are calling in because they have genuine doubts and curiosity and want to engage in conversation. You, you can't sum everybody up and dump them all in one bucket. I, I didn't want to do that. I'm just that I, I wasn't saying you did. So, sorry, let me rephrase that. One can't or shouldn't dump everybody into, one, into a bucket. There are lots of different reasons people call. Okay, cool. I often think that some people ring up uh, to argue for God because, in fact, they doubt what they actually are trying to say. But, I, li I literally just uh, said that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. That, that's, I was agreeing with you. Okay. Yeah. And if we had more time on okay. each call, we could probably get into people's motivations. Saying hello. The atheists in Poland love the show. Great. And the snooker invitation is still on, Matt. Yeah, cheers. Thanks. I'd love to do that. I played some snooker when I was in London last. Um, but yeah, if I get to Poland, I'd be happy to, to do that. 
Okay, thank you. Thanks, Alex. Sure. It's a strange thing um, that it's an interesting question. What is the motivation behind the person who called? Yeah. The problem is I don't know that we are in any position to find out what that motivation is. If someone tells me I called because you're wrong and I want to prove it, I'm just going to take them at their word. And if they, they called and said, I'm calling because I'm, I'm curious and I'm having doubt. I'm just going to take them at their word because I can't actually read people's minds. And if I were to ask someone, what is your, mo like if we had call screeners, who, who at the end of a call came in and said, please tell us your thoughts about how that call went with our hosts. And what was your reason for calling? How do you know that you're getting the truth? And while right. it's a psychological curiosity and something I'm genuinely interested in, uh, I'm more interested in the substantive calls that get to the truth of reality. Right. And the person themselves may not know exactly what their primary motivation was for calling. They may just felt like calling that day and talking about a topic. So yeah. there, there wasn't right. any football on. I was bored. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 